Welcome to Skill Session. Today we're going to be installing some great web development tools right on this completely new install of a Mac. So we're going to install the Chrome browser, Visual Studio Code, PHP and MariaDB. Let's get started. Now first of all, can't you do web development on your Mac without any of that? Sure. Let's hit Command Space and type in Text Edit. Once you open Text Edit, you have this rich text editor, which is not really suitable for code because you can do things like this. But if you go up here into Format and say Make Plain Text, then you get a completely pure. And once we save this, we can actually save it into document and we can call it index.html. Save it and use.html. And we can say that we want to open this in Safari. So we have a completely functional website right here without installing anything. Now we can't do any backend development with this. We can't do any database development and we'll of course want to work on that. But the first thing we want to do is Safari is a great browser, but the fact of the matter is most people use Chrome. So if we want to test our web development on the browsers that most people use, we need to test it in Chrome. So let's get Chrome right away. Chrome. Download now. And there we go. And when we open this DMG file, all we have to do is just drag it over into the applications folder. And now, we have it right here in our launchpad, Google Chrome. So now that we have that, let's get a better text editor. Visual Studio Code. Download for Mac. And once that zip file is downloaded, let's just open it. And we just have the application right here. Now we want to drag that into our applications right here. Now I already have a file in here called index.php. So I'll make another one called test.php. But what you can see here is that if I do what I did before, then I have syntax highlighting right now, unlike what I had before. Now, in order to install PHP or MariaDB, you need to install Homebrew first. So let's open up Chrome and let's find Homebrew. And we click here on the homepage to go to homebrew.sh. Here on the front page, we're gonna find a command that'll install Homebrew for us. So if we take all of this, we can just click on the button out here. It'll copy it to our, to our clipboard. So we can hit Command Space, say Terminal, and then Command V to paste what we just found. I'll hit enter, asking for the password for the computer. You won't see the password as you type it in, but it's being typed in. I'll hit enter, and this is gonna take a while. Now that Homebrew is installed, we need to add a path to, um, to the terminal in order to use it. So we'll type in here, export path equals quotation marks slash opt slash homebrew slash bin colon dollar sign and then path in capital letters. Hit enter, now we can use the brew command. So we can say brew search PHP. And what do you know? Here we get some results. So let's install PHP. Now we can select the version. We could say brew install PHP at 8.0 if that's what we want. But we can also just remove the ad and just say install PHP. That'll just give us the latest version. So let's do that. I'll hit enter. So now that PHP is installed, we need to add 
the PHP path to the environment variables in order to get it to work. I'll create a new terminal window because PHP is going to take up the terminal window that it started from. So I'll hit command N. So before we can do anything here, we need to add the homebrew path variables again. So export path equals slash opt slash homebrew slash bin colon dollar sign path and quotation mark. So now let's check that brew works. So brew search PHP. So they work now. Now that we have that, we can insert the variables for running PHP. So export path equals, and now we need the path from over here. So we can actually just copy it, command C, paste it, command V, and then just add slash bin colon dollar sign path to the end, end quotation mark, hit enter, and PHP s localhost colon 8080, hit enter, and now we're running PHP. We're running it in kind of a funky folder. Let's just see it work. So in our test.php file here, let's add some PHP and say echo. This is PHP. We'll save this. Now I can hit control C to stop my PHP server. And I can take the whole folder that I want to run PHP in and I can just drag that into that terminal window. That gives me the path for that directory. So I'll go back to the beginning of it. I'll say CD space, and then I'll hit enter. So now I'm inside that folder. And from here, I'll hit arrow up two times to get the command again, PHP dash S localhost 8080. And I'm running my PHP server in that folder now. So I can open Chrome and I can go to localhost colon 8080 slash test dot PHP, hit enter. And here we go, this is PHP. So PHP is running now. The next step is of course to install MariaDB. And once again, I'll want to add a new terminal window. So I'm getting a little bit tired of, of adding that path variable all the time, but I'll show you at the end of the video how we can avoid that in the future. So for now, let's just add it one more time. Export path equals slash opt slash homebrew slash bin colon dollar sign path. Here we go. Brew search MariaDB. We'll just say brew install MariaDB. Enter and it's installing. And now that it's installed, we need to run a couple of commands. So I'll say brew services start MariaDB. And now that it's started, you can say sudo mysql underscore secure underscore installation. Hit enter and it'll ask for a password. Now this needs to be your computer password that you use to log on to your computer with, not the password for the database. And now we can set a new password for the database. Root, and we're gonna be asked a couple of questions. Switch to Unix socket authentication? Yes. Change the root password? Yes. We want it to be root and root. Please do this even if you think you know what the password is. Um, remove anonymous users? Yes. Disallow root login remotely? Yes. Reload the privileges table? <laughs> no, we also don't need that. Okay, so now it's actually running. So we can test this. We can say sudo mysql u root without any spaces between them and then dash p. And then it's gonna ask for a password. We just set that to root and now we're actually inside. So I can write something like show databases. This is SQL. Oh, I need to put a semicolon at the end of that. But this is SQL and it's actually showing me the databases and I could write whatever I want here. So I can say create database mydb. Okay, so if we click control C, we're gonna exit the database. And after we've, uh, we've exited it, we can of course start it up again. We can start up PHP again after we uh, hit control C to stop the PHP server. But every single time we do that, we have to enter these paths, right? That's becoming pretty annoying. So let's do that by default. So right now, it's like this. If we open up a new window, and if I say php-s localhost 8080, it doesn't work. There's no such command as php. If I say brew search php, nothing happens. That command doesn't exist, right? We have to add those paths again and again and again, and that becomes super duper annoying. So let's jump up here into settings, terminal, settings, 
and then we take this basic layout because we can have different layouts but but the one that's default uh, is the one we want to play around with and that's probably basic if you haven't touched it before and if you click the tab here that's called shell then you can set a sort of check mark here where it says run command now by default it's gonna say dash set as h just delete that and in here we take these paths export path equals quotation marks forward slash up slash homebrew slash bin colon dollar sign path and quotation mark and then a semicolon so we're ready for another one export space path equals forward slash opt slash homebrew slash php slash 8.1 slash bin colon dollar sign path end and we don't have to click save or anything this this saves automatically so if we just close this down now it doesn't work for the ones that are already open but if we create a new terminal window and we zoom in on this you can see it already ran these uh, these commands so now all we all we need to do is just say php dash s localhost colon 8080 okay so MariaDB is all up and running, PHP is running, we have syntax highlighting with Visual Studio code, everything is fine. We just need to test that it's working, right? We need to connect our PHP to our database. So let's do this. In order to connect, we need to set up a couple of variables, right? We're gonna need a server name, username, password, and the database name, right? And then we need to insert a connection string so that we can try and connect to the database. New PDO, parenthesis, quotation marks, my SQL colon host equals server name and a semicolon and DB name equals database. And then we'll add the username and the password. Now this will try to connect to the database, but let's make sure. Let's say try and catch. Now what do we want to catch? We want to catch a PDO exception and we'll call that exception. If that happens, we'll want to, uh, to echo database connection failed and add the exception. And of course, if the connection works, we'll want to print that out as well. So echo database connection successful. So let's run PHP and try it out in the browser. We'll drag the workspace folder into the terminal and we'll add CD space before it. And we'll start PHP, php-s localhost 8080. We'll open the browser, go to localhost, 8080 slash test dot php and we can see here that the database connection is successful so that's it it's all connected everything works you're ready to go congratulations and that's going to be all for this skill session